Hello fans of all ages, Ryan Morick back here with you. We are finally just one day away from pitchers and catchers. I feel like this offseason has been a lot longer than off seasons in the past. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that last year was only 60 games. So we were off from basically October. And then obviously we had a little stretch of whatever spring training was last year. And then we were off again until July when summer camp started. And the season didn't start until July 23rd. So we basically had nine months of an offseason and then three months of baseball and then six months of an offseason again so when you really think about it 15 of the last 18 months have been without baseball so now it's awesome to finally see that we're getting 162 games spring training is starting on time knock on wood hopefully everything goes well and i'm excited to have a full slate of baseball for the 2020 season i want to talk about my early predictions for both the yankees and the mets obviously me being a new jersey kid i'm a diehard yankee fan i follow the the Mets a lot. I work for them. I work for SNY. So obviously I have some pretty big ties to the Mets. So I want to talk about them first because I really like what they have done this offseason. The whole Steve Cohen thing, that was not a myth. And I see Mets fans all over social media saying that they missed out on all of the big free agents. That's the key. They missed out on the free agents. They got Francisco Lindor, who can be a top five player in all of baseball. They got Carlos Carrasco, who automatically slides to their number two spot in the rotation. And Carlos Carrasco has been a Cy Young finalist before. A couple of years ago, he finished in fourth place. Last year, he had an ERA of sub three. Again, 60 game season. You guys have heard me say this on like a broken record when it comes to this thing. 60 game season, take it for what you will. But Carlos Carrasco is good, has been very good. So yeah, they missed out on George Springer and it would have been great to get him. Trevor Bauer, you guys know how I feel about Trevor Bauer. I would not have paid him. It was kind of weird to see the New York Mets be ready to shell out all this money for Trevor Bauer and not George Springer, but that's besides the point. Another move that the Mets recently made, they made a couple, Albert Almora and Kevin Pillar. In my opinion, Kevin Pillar is one of the best defensive center fielders in all of baseball. I love that pickup for them. The one thing that the Mets don't need is more offense. Obviously, it would be nice to have more offense, especially on the right side of the plate, but Kevin Pillar is going to be great defensively. I have no idea if he's going to play every single day. I wouldn't be against it because Kevin Pillar is this team's best defensive center fielder in a very long time. They had Juan Lagares, but his wheels fell off after a little while. And no, Kevin Pillar isn't the same fielder that he was five years ago, but he's at least very good. It's going to be better than whatever Brandon Nimmo is going to give you out in center field. Brandon Nimmo is average at the corners and definitely below average in center field. Whatever Kevin Pillar is going to give you defensively in center field it's going to be much better than anyone else on the team will give you i love that pickup for the mets again who knows if he's going to play every day who knows if they're even out on jackie bradley jr at this point but nonetheless if kevin pillar is your opening day center fielder that's certainly not anything to complain about and here's why because you look at this team from one through nine they have good hitters power hitters. Kevin Pillar is their worst hitter, but you know what? If they have a DH, they have eight other pretty decent hitters. And if they don't have a DH, they have seven other pretty good hitters. Now I need to see an improvement from Pete Alonso. And I think he's this team's most important player because I think Pete Alonso is going to be hitting four, five, six in this lineup every single day. The Mets are going to rely on Pete Alonso to drive in runs. But in his last 160 games, dating back to his rookie year, he's been a 230 hitter. That first half of his rookie year, he was unstoppable. He was the MVP up to that point. And his power certainly didn't leave that's one thing that he did not struggle with last year his power is obviously there it's always going to be there Pete Alonso was a threat to hit 40 home runs every single year but if Pete Alonso can't chase high fastballs and swings at pitches low and away in the dirt and he's striking out a whole bunch then that's an issue for the Mets because you have guys like Michael Conforto who are going to be hot and cold Brandon Nimmo's best ability is to walk Jeff McNeil is a great hitter but they need comfortability in that lineup and they need to have faith in Pete Alonso to drive in these runs two years ago we were saying if Dominic Smith is a pro baseball player Brody Van Wagenen told me that he was done with him. Dominic Smith outplayed Alonzo last year. He outplayed Alonzo in the second half when Smith was healthy. Dominic Smith's last at bat of the 2019 season was that walk-off home run. Hey, that's a good problem to have. If Dominic Smith is playing well, that's fine. Now, the problem with Dominic Smith is that they're not going to have a piece in this lineup for him if they have a DH, because it's going to be either one of Smith or Nimmo sitting every single day. Unless if you do have Nimmo in center field, and then Kevin Pillar is a late-game replacement, you could do that, obviously. But I really think that Kevin Pillar should be in center field as much as possible if they don't make any other moves. Now, a lot of these projections, the fan graphs and the Pakoda rankings, all of them are forgetting that the Atlanta Braves exist. And look, like I said, I love what the Mets have done this offseason. They are probably on paper the fourth best team in the National League. They're better than everyone in the National League Central. Only the Dodgers and Padres are better than them at West, but they're not up to the Braves caliber just yet. Maybe on paper they are, but they haven't played a game yet. Now, their rotation is much better than Atlanta, that's for sure, especially when Noah Syndergaard comes back. Remember, Noah Syndergaard was 
was one of the best pitchers in baseball for at least three or four years. He was their ace. He started on opening day in 2018, the same year that DeGrom wound up winning the Cy Young Award. And Syndergaard was very good that year also. 2019, he obviously struggled a little bit. Tommy John surgery in 2020. He'll be back sometime in the summer. But once Syndergaard comes back, this rotation is very elite, especially if you are getting the best out of Marcus Stroman and Carlos Carrasco. You know what Jacob DeGrom is going to be. David Peterson, he's a rookie, but the Mets are confident in him. And I do like Joey Lucchese. He's a young, controllable arm, very good strikeout pitcher. They have him for a few more years. He's a very good six starter slash spot starter for them. But they're not better than Atlanta just yet. Atlanta has the MVP in Freddie Freeman and another potential MVP in Ronald Acuna Jr. They have Marcelo Zuno. They have a great lineup from top to bottom. They have Travis Darno, former Met. <laughs> they have a pretty decent rotation. That division is going to be a battle between the Mets and the Braves, that's for sure. But I do think that the Mets are going to be in a position where they are fighting for a postseason spot. They're probably going to be fighting for that division come the trade deadline. And I think that they are going to make a move at the trade deadline to try to beat the Braves. It's going to have 2015 vibes. Because I don't think that this roster currently constituted with a bunch of holes defensively, especially. And they're in talks with Chris Bryant. It was rumored that they were talking to the A's about Matt Chapman. They're going to make some moves, especially at the trade deadline. And especially if the Cubs are falling off and they need to shell out Chris Bryant. And who knows what Chris Bryant is going to be. But again, the Mets do have some holes. They are not a perfect team by any stretch of the imagination. Offensively, that's not a concern at all. Defensively, left field is a sore spot. Third base is a sore spot, as is first base. They're going to get offensive production out of Pete Alonso with Dominic Smith. They're going to get offensive production from J.D. Davis. And he's a wild card also, Davis, because he struggled a little bit last year. Now, again, like I've said, take it for what you will. 2019, he found his groove, was a great hitter, especially at City Field. J.D. Davis became a fan favorite in that 2019 season, but his defense is almost unplayable at third base. And that goes for Dominic Smith out in left field and J.D. Davis in left field. Now, you have guys who can move around and play different positions in the field so you can get all these guys 400 at bats in a season but there are glaring holes defensively and with a guy like Marcus Stroman who is a ground ball pitcher David Peterson has not solidified himself as a strikeout pitcher just yet Syndergaard and DeGrom they're going to give you strikeouts obviously but those two guys Stroman and Peterson they're going to allow a lot of balls in play that's just the way they pitch you really trust J.D. Davis and Dominic Smith in left and Brandon Nimmo in center or even Pete Alonso at first for that matter they need to build up that trust now again I love what the Mets have done Francisco Lindor was one of the best moves I have seen the Mets make probably ever. It was their biggest deal without a doubt since getting Mike Piazza. And that probably includes the Cespedes deal back in 2015. Those three moves are the best I've ever seen the Mets make. And again, they could have had George Springer, but this offseason would be a lot more successful if they do wind up signing Michael Conforto and Noah Syndergaard. You have to do that at this point because you didn't get George Springer. You didn't get Trevor Bauer. You cannot afford to lose Michael Conforto and Noah Syndergaard after this year. You can't. I think right now the Mets are a wild card team, but I do think that they win the wild card by a good margin. I think it's going to be them in San Diego. Because I think those are the five teams. I think LA, San Diego, New York, Atlanta, and probably St. Louis. I mean, the NL Central is such a toss-up. You know one team is coming out of the NL Central. That's for sure. Miami is a scrappy team, but I don't think that they could keep it up for 162 games. The Phillies never do the job. And the Nationals, I don't really think they're all that good either. Now, they made some nice moves. They have a very good rotation, but they haven't done anything to help out that bullpen. It didn't hurt them in 2019, obviously. But I don't think the Nationals are better than Atlanta and the Mets. So I think the Mets are safe, but I do think that they're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive, especially toward that trade deadline, if they want to solidify themselves in the postseason. And I think they do. And I'll say this comfortably about the New York Mets. I think if they miss out on the postseason, it's a failure of a season. I think at worst, they are the second best team in the National League East. Like I said, they are far and away better than everyone in the Central. And only two teams are better than them in the West. At worst, they are the fifth best team in the National League. That is a postseason spot. We've been waiting three years for the Mets to finally get over the hump and be back in that 2015 form. With all the moves that they have made this offseason, Lindor, Carrasco, they've improved the bullpen. Now, Seth Lugo is a big loss in that bullpen, but they got Trevor May. Who knows what they do with Batances or whatever, but this team is good and they finally need to play like it. Now, as for the New York Yankees, they're probably going to wind up winning the division. Their offense is just way too good. They're consistently atop the rankings in runs scored and home runs and extra base hits and slugger percentage and OPS, almost everything. Their offense is going to carry them once again. Now, Toronto's going to hang in there for sure. Absolutely. They are much improved this year. George Springer was a great pickup. I'm excited to see what that young core, how they can improve this season, but they're not as good as the Yankees. Not yet. But the glaring issue with the Yankees is this starting rotation. Now, if everyone is at their best, then it's going to be unstoppable and they will be unstoppable. But the only true thing in this rotation is Garrett Cole. Now, I like Jordan Montgomery a lot. I got love for him after that performance in the ALDS where he saved the Yankee season. He had a very good rookie year. But again, he hasn't pitched anything more than 30 innings since that 
rookie season all the way back in 2017 maybe early in 2018 he probably had about 60 innings pitch before he had tommy john surgery but 2019 he only made a couple appearances 2020 he only made a couple appearances and that's the same thing for just about the rest of this rotation Corey kluber one inning last year jameson tyon has not pitched since 2019 going back to kluber only 34 innings in 2019 louis severino 25 innings since the beginning of 2019 had a lat injury had tommy john surgery domingo herman has not pitched since 2019 clark smith david garcia they are prospects mike king prospect jonathan luizaga hasn't been a consistent starter yet very good out of the bullpen but i don't know if he can do the job as a starting pitcher now if david garcia and clark schmidt are what they are and that is top prospects then awesome if Corey kluber goes back to his Cy young form awesome if jameson tyon is what he was back in 2018 awesome if domingo herman is what he was in 2019 awesome then they will have five or six starters who all have the potential to be a sub four era pitcher all with garrett cole who is probably the second best pitcher on the planet and in my opinion definitely the best pitcher in the american league the only pitcher i think is better than cole is jacob Degrom. but that is obviously a glaring issue for this team they have garrett cole and five or six question marks now again i am the most confident in jordan montgomery but it wouldn't surprise me if he does struggle this year because they're going to have to rely on him to get innings something that he has not done in almost three years now they made some nice moves with the bullpen they got rid of adam Adovino, which i was a little surprised about but in return they got justin wilson a great lefty and they got darren o'day so they got depth in this bullpen now now all this chapman isn't what he used to be but i still trust him to get the job done more often than not postseason that's a different story but they have chapman they have Britton, they have o'day they have chad green they have justin wilson that's five very good relievers so this bullpen to me is not much of a concern anymore but they got to stay healthy and that's another glaring issue for this team health now what's good for the yankees is that they have a solid bench so if aaron judge and john carlos stanton and aaron hicks if they get hurt and you can almost write it down in sharpie they have a good bench i think the yankees wind up signing brett gardner again i mean brett gardner is not what he was in 2015 or 2017 but he's a very good defender he's going to work counts he's going to get on base now i'd be careful if i'm the yankees about what i give brett gardner but nonetheless that's going to be an option if one of those guys gets hurt same thing with jay bruce i think jay bruce got signed solely just in case of an injury in the spring or further on down the road he's going to be a pinch hitting left-handed bat who's probably a little bit more reliable than mike ford veteran presence power hitter mike ford struggled last year now jay bruce is not the all-star that he was a few years ago but again that short ports left-handed bat the yankees kind of need that they brought back dj lemayhu who is the catalyst of this entire ball club gary sanchez has to be better he cannot hit 150 and i think this is it for gary sanchez i think this is his last chance now 2019 he was pretty good 34 homers in what 105 games it was the average was low the defense was a little bit better in 2019 he took a major step back in 2020 after a few off years now it wasn't good defense but it was at least a little bit more serviceable but gary sanchez cannot be an automatic out luke voigt is luke voigt power hitter i think he's gonna be very good the offense does not concern me except gary sanchez they're going to strike out a lot we all know the deal but this team this offense is good enough to make it to the postseason no one should worry if the yankees strikeouts and home runs are going to be enough for the postseason it's going to be you can write it down the yankees are going to make the postseason and if they don't come back and comment on this and rip me apart i will take it gladly the the favorites or one of the favorites to win a world series for a reason they have gary cole they have a great offense an offense who is going to outslog most teams and most pitchers now in the postseason they got to figure it out now we can argue if analytics work if they don't work look analytics works analytics is just a fancy word for stats now do i like how they always go for the home run no but if there's one thing i know about home runs versus trying to string out a couple of hits it's much easier to just hit a home run than hit four singles in a row and that's why they do go for the long ball i'm not saying it's the right way to go but that is their line of thinking but nonetheless this starting rotation needs to give them length they need to save the bullpen in october because the bullpen has gotten tired in three four years in a row now the offense has shut down a few years in a row in the postseason and that is a major concern the yankees are are going to win the american league east but the biggest questions are their health and their rotation now again if judge if stan if they wind up getting hurt they have good bench players they have clint frazier who came along immensely last year gold glove finalist i personally think he could be this team's best hitter i've been a clint frazier fan since day one they have a great offense labor torres needs to be a little bit better defensively at short i would not be surprised if they made a move defensively toward the trade deadline especially if labor torres does struggle offensively like he did last year but again this team is just way too good to miss the postseason it's not going to happen you could be concerned about the strikeouts and the home runs all that and i get it i'm with you but i think they'll worry about that in october like what else do the yankees have to do take a look at what the tampa bay rays did they made it to the world series with basically the same exact philosophy that the yankees had they struck out a whole bunch they relied on the long ball more so than 
the Yankees in October. And then what happened? They were one mismanagement away from a Game 7 in the World Series. That's baseball now. Home runs. If you hit more home runs than the other team in the series, you win the series. That's not my opinion. That's a stat. It's so hard to talk about the Yankees because it has been the same story every single year. They need more starting pitching. They need to hit better situationally. Their bullpen gets gassed. Starters need to give them innings. It's the same conversation year in, year out. But I know one thing. Offensively, they don't need to improve. They have probably the best offensive first baseman in the American League, arguably. Maybe him and Jose Abreu. DJ LeMahieu was an MVP candidate. Faber Torres is a great shortstop offensively. Gio Urshela has been unbelievable. And Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton are MVP players if they're healthy. And Clint Frazier can certainly be in that conversation. And Aaron Hicks is a great glove defensively, has a great arm, gets on base. What more do you want in this offense? They're going to score runs. The offense is what's going to bring the Yankees to hopefully the World Series. The conversation is always about the starting pitching though. I always hear Yankee fans say they need more DJ LeMahieu. Like, where are you getting more DJ LeMahieu's? Where? Are the Mets trading Jeff McNeil? Are the Angels trading Mike Trout? They work with what they have and it does work and they're close. It's not like they are a 90 win team barely making the postseason and then getting swept in three games in the division series. 2017, they were one game away from the World Series. 2018, they ran into a team that won 108 games. 2019, they fought literally until the final out. They made it to game six. DJ LeMay, who tied it up in the top of the ninth. 2020, they ran into a better team than they were, a scrappier team. And it was a 2-1 final. The ball goes one way or the other in the Yankees' favor. The Yankees probably go to the ALCS. And they were better than Houston that year. They ran into a team that was better than them last year. The Rays bullpen was elite in that entire series. The Yankees could not take advantage. That's no fault of the Yankees. The Rays are very good. Or they were very good, I should say, last year. But now I ask, what team in the American League is better than the Yankees? What team in the American League is going to shut down the Yankees in October? Minnesota? Everyone beats Minnesota in October. Cleveland? No. How about anyone out west? Maybe Oakland? I don't know. But I think the Yankees are a lot better than Oakland. I think the Yankees are a lot better than the Astros, who have lost George Springer. They don't have Justin Verlander this year. And then when Carlos Correa leaves, he's going to be gone next year from Houston. So this is the Yankees' time to take over. Because I think, on paper, they are far and away the best team in the American League. And I'll say it right now, I think this is a failure if the Yankees don't make it to the World Series. I do. If everyone gets hurt, then that's a different conversation. But this team, on paper, right now, they better make it to at least the ALCS. Because that would be a failure. That would be a disappointment. And I think not making it to the World Series would be a failure. Their toughest competition, in my opinion, is probably going to be Toronto. Because I think they're very Rays-like. Scrappy team or going to make pitchers work. But the difference between this year's Blue Jays and last year's Rays are that this year's Blue Jays, their pitching is not what Tampa was last year. The Yankees are by far the best team in the AL East. If they played in the AL Central, they would win 115 games. If they played in the AL West, they'd probably win at least 105. It shouldn't surprise anyone if the Yankees wind up winning 100 games this year. Last year, they were very hot and cold. But when they were hot, no one was beating them. Aaron Judge was an MVP candidate up until he got hurt. They had a 10-game winning streak at one point. That was the longest in all the big leagues last year. The Yankees are going to be fine, but hopefully in October, they can finally figure it out. Baseball season is finally here. Thank God. It took way too long. Enjoy spring training. And we have 44 days until opening day. Check out this channel for more. Thanks for watching. It is not goodbye. See you later. So long and take care, everybody.